Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sanj and today we're going to look at the most popular ETFs from 2021. Now you're probably wondering how am I describing or defining popular and it's basically based on funds under management and in terms of how much funds flow has gone into each of the ETFs and which of the ETFs that had the most amount of money flow into them. Now as a disclaimer, popular doesn't necessarily mean good meaning just because it was popular and it had a lot of funds inflow into that ETF, it doesn't mean it had great returns. And ETFs that had great returns may not have had great funds inflow either. So this is purely looking at it from a popularity point of view in terms of where, where are a lot of people investing and buying ETFs and which types of ETFs are they. So in this video, we'll just have a quick look at that list of top ETFs in terms of funds inflow and have a bit of a think of what kind of themes there might be. And also maybe look into 2022, what might be popular during those future years. So the way to figure out funds inflow is you can look at some of these different reports that are put out by whether it's the ASX or in this case ETF Securities which is actually a company that does their own ETFs but they also put out these weekly ETF market monitor reports and I'll show you a quick screenshot of it. It's got a few tables on it and it's free to use. You can go and download it yourself. I'll leave a link below and the idea is you pull this report up and you can see what the top performing ETFs in terms of returns were. But then the second set of tables is this interesting bit where you can see the funds flow. And it's broken down into what happened in the last one week, year to date, so since the start of 2021 till now in early December, and 12 month flow. So that's sort of a rolling 12 months, the last 12 months what's happened. So looking at the table, this is what we have for year to date flows for 2021 so far and it's the usual suspects. You got VAS, VGS, NDQ, FE, A200, the top five. Kind of makes sense. VAS and VGS are kind of your bread and butter ETS for investing in or for Australians investing in the share market. You got VAS top 300, VGS the whole world excluding Australia. So you've got a nice combination of domestic and international. NDQ, it's been a great performer. It's a NASDAQ 100 track I believe. It's been performing really well. It's a way of saying you want to get exposure to the top tech companies. So makes a lot of sense. It's got uh, a lot of inflows into it. Ethy, again, a great theme, ethical investing, especially beta shares. I like beta shares ethical products. They're very true to label, should you say. Uh, and then beta shares A200 product, kind of the alternative to VAS if you want a more narrow selection. Then the top 300, you can go for the top 200. Now, when you look a little bit further down the list, I'm actually really glad to see VDHG in there because I actually think this is a great ETF product. I don't have it myself, but I do think it's great in that it's got both domestic and international. It's got hedging and not hedge. So if you're worried about currency, it sort of has a bit of balance for that. It's got equities and fixed income and it automatically rebalances itself. It's a great ETF to do that set and forget type investing for your ETF investments. So I thought it'd be interesting to also look at the top 2020 ETFs in terms of funds flow there to see any common themes. And you can see VAS is still there, NDQ is there. But other than that, there's no VGS. VGAD is there, the hedged version, but not the unhedged version. Gold is there, so it's obviously a shift towards gold. Maybe the uncertainty of COVID from 2020 had a lot of people shifting money into there. And interestingly, while A200 didn't have a position here in this top 10 list, IOZ and STW, both the alternatives of, I guess, to VAS, was in there. So interesting to see quite a lot of shift towards those products. And they weren't necessarily there in the following year. So maybe people who had position, taken those positions up weren't really investing there. The one thing I'm not sure when it comes to a lot of this stuff is it's obviously got retail flows in here, but I do wonder if there's a lot of institutional flows going in and out of these ETFs as well. Because to see the level of volume going in and out in terms of, you know, A200 was there this year, but not there last year, tells me maybe there is some institutional money going in as well on top of the retail money. And that would probably explain quite a lot of the flexibility going on or the variability going on here. Now, an interesting thing I also wanted to see was Google Trends versus what people are buying in terms of ETFs. So I wanted to see what's popular in terms of ETFs from funds flow, but then also what's popular in terms of Google Trends and Google searches. And you can do this yourself where you just go to Google Trends and you type in the search terms that you want to see in terms of the popularity of it's being searched on the internet through Google. So I threw in VAS, VGS, NDQ, FE and A200, the top five list from this year, and looked at what is the actual charting of the interest in terms of people Googling it over time. 
And it's kind of an interesting segmentation you've got here. You've got Vass clearly in blue, an outlier. It's going, it's very popular, everyone's searching for it, it makes a lot of sense. Then you've got that small category, the next category down with VGS and NDQ, the kind of next level of popularity, the red and the yellow line. And then you've got the green, the purple with Ethian A200, sort of a segment down. So while it doesn't exactly line up in terms of, you know, VAS, VGS, NDQ, Ethi, A200, the pockets of, or the, the segments make a lot of sense. VAS, popular, then the next two, and then the next two. So there does seem to be an interesting kind of relative relationship with what people are Googling versus what they're investing in. And maybe that's where, you know, you can see the research come through as well. Obviously, this was not very scientific. I probably should have looked at other ETFs as well to see if they were Googled heavily but weren't invested in. But for the purpose of this, I think this is very reasonable to say if it's popular on Google, it's probably popular in terms of what people are buying. So looking forward into 2022, I was thinking what kind of ETFs might be popular then? It'll probably be your usual suspects. VAS, maybe VGS or NDQ will continue to be quite popular. I think we'll shift a bit more into the crypto space. So CRYP, Digger, maybe the new Bitcoin and Ethereum tracking ETFs. I don't know who's bringing it out. I used to say it was going to be BetaShares, but I'm actually not sure if it's BetaShares or ETF Securities or one of those will come out. I think that'll be an interesting space to see if they start to see a lot of funds inflow go into them. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a great product to buy in terms of returns. It just means a lot of people will probably put a lot of money into them. Uh, in terms of ethical as well, I think they'll see, we saw Ethi was popular in 2021, probably continue to see a bit more inflow into it. And then if there's a bit of uncertainty, we might see a bit of action with gold. As usual, flight to gold in terms of uncertainty. So as I said at the start of the video, just because an ETF is popular and it's getting a lot of funds, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a great product, it doesn't also mean it's a bad product. It just means it's getting a lot of funds into it. And for whatever reason, a lot of retail and maybe institutional investors are putting a lot of money into buying that particular ETF. And the movement of the ETF share price is not in any way related to how much people are buying or selling of it it's more related to the underlying assets underneath it. So be cool. just be conscious of that. If you are new to the investing space, please do check out some of my videos about VAS and VGS or VDHG, the Forever ETFs. I've done a few videos on these topics and consider subscribing for future videos. Bye for now.